W1438 column is made of A36 steel. Determine the critical load if the bottom is fixed and the top is free to move about the strong axis and pinned about the weak axis. And then there's the statistics of a W14 by 38 beam. A couple things to note with this problem. One, you can go look up, once again, these are all from a chart telling us what the W14 by 38 beam is. That's the nice thing about dealing with I-beams is all this stuff is tabulated somewhere. And so we don't have to do much work here. Now, this one, it has two different moments of inertia. It's much stronger in the X, much smaller in the Y. And the reason I say it's stronger in the X than the Y is the number's bigger in the X direction than it is in the Y. Moment of inertia, remember, what is this? This is really kind of a comparative measure of how hard it is to spin about that axis. And so a bigger number means that compared to a smaller number, it takes more effort to spin it around the X axis, in this case, than the Y. Because the Y is only 26, the X is almost 400. So 30-ish is a lot smaller than 400-ish, so it's a lot easier to spin around that 30 axis, that 30 inch to the fourth. Now the other thing in this is we have two different boundary conditions on the top. So we have it, it is free in one axis and it's free in the strong axis, which would make sense if it's, it's very strong along that x-axis, there's no real reason to have to put it in. And then it's pinned around the weak axis, and the weak axis would be the y-axis. So in real life, what could this be? Well, this could be a beam that's got a, a hole drilled into it with wire that makes it act. So along the y-axis, you've got the wire there to kind of pin it in place, and then it's left completely free in the x-axis. How do we go about solving this? Well, it's the same way that we solve all the other ones. We calculate out the critical load in the X, we calculate the critical load in the Y, and then we calculate out what the yield, what the stresses are and compare it to the yield stress. Does it fail in the X? Does it fail in the Y? Does it fail because of material? And so we're just going to go about using the Euler equation. And like I said, since we've already got these numbers here, it's, it's a little bit easier because we don't have to really do anything. So let's look at the x direction. So our k for x, so if it's free, if it's a fixed and free column, that k is going to be 2. And then I know that my moment of inertia, which is given to me in the problem, so ix, is 385 inches to the fourth. Now I'm going to have to look up, I have A36 steel. And actually A36 steel is, is an interesting one for property wise to remember. Not so much the E. The E is, I think, yeah, 29,000 KSI. So 29 e to the 3 KSI. So remember, this is 29 e to the 6 PSI. Uh, the reason I say it's interesting is because it's yield stress. You look it up, the yield stress of A36 steel is 36 KSI. So it's kind of an easy one to remember. Okay, so let's find out what its critical load in the x direction is. So p crit is going to be pi squared e i x over k x l. And I'm just using the k x and k y to kind of differentiate between the two. So pi squared 29 e to the 6 psi. I'm just converting this all over into psi's. Um, our i given to us, 385 inches to the fourth, divide that by 2 times our length, which is 20 feet. Now that's, oop, that's 20 feet. We want to convert that to inches to be in with everything else. So 12 inches over 1 foot. So we're going to take all of that gobbledygook and we're going to square that. And so what we're going to end up with is p crit of 478.28 kip. Remember, kip is, that's 478,000 pounds, because the kip is just 1,000 pounds. So that's our critical. So when we get to a load of 478,000 pounds, it's going to buckle in the x direction. Is that our answer? We don't know. It could be. We've got two other failure modes. It can fail in the y direction, and it can fail by material. So let's look at what happens in the y direction. So on the y direction, which is the weaker axis, it says it's pinned. And so if we look at our, <clears throat> excuse me, 
if we look at our fixed and pinned condition, that will tell us that the K value 0.7. And that's just we go and we look at our charts. And so then IY is 26.7 inches to the fourth. We solve our critical stress, pi over squared. It's the same equation. I'm not going to write it over. I'm just going to write the numbers in. 29 e to the 6 psi. It's the weaker axis, so 26.7 inches to the fourth. And then we're going to divide it by the same thing. 2 times 20 feet times 12 feet. <laughs> not 12 feet. Uh, 12 inches is 1 foot. So that way our units cancel out correctly. Square it. And so if I multiply that together, it's going to take 270,076 or 270.76 kips of force. So it will never buckle in the x direction because it will buckle in the y direction way before it gets to the x direction. Once again, is this the answer? We don't know. We have one more thing because remember, Euler's equation is only valid if the critical stress is less than the yield stress. So I'm not even going to worry about the critical stress in the x direction because it's never going to get there. It's going to fail in the y direction first. So the critical stress, so when it buckles in the y direction, where is it going to buckle? Well, it's 270.76 kip divided by 11.2 inches squared. And so I solve that, it's going to be 24.17 ksi. And that is less than our 36 ksi. So now I can sit there and say, okay, it is going to buckle in the y direction. And I know this because it's the lower of the two critical stresses and the critical stress is less than the yield stress. If this would have worked out to be 37 KSI, it would never get a chance to buckle because the material would rip apart before you get to this point. And I can't stress this enough. If I give you a problem like this on an exam, you need to be able, you have to calculate it all three. You can't just eyeball and go, I think that in the X direction, it's, it's going to be bigger than the Y. I need to actually see that. So you need to calculate out buckling the X, buckling in the Y, critical stress. Anytime you do a column, you got to do all three of those.